In this two-part video, we'll look at wireframing and creating quick interactive prototypes for user experience testing. This is a quick tutorial for my mobile apps class and design interactions course. I'll be using the Pencil Project software, which is open source and available for Windows, Mac and Linux. You can download it by heading over to pencil.evolus.vn. So I'll be using the case study of creating an app for the Student Activity Day sign-up. OK, I've already looked at the design brief and I've come up with a few ideas that have been documented in this flowchart. I'll be using this as a jumping off point to start the wireframes. OK, so here I'm in pencil and I'm going to start a new document, open up a new document. And at the moment it's unsaved, so I'm actually going to uh, save this as a new file, as wireframe. You won't actually see this on my screen capture software, but there we go, it's saved. It's now called uh, wireframe and it's an untitled page. And these tabs on the side here, they have different components that we can look at. So they have different pre-formatted styles for different things such as uh, mobile phones and uh, websites. Now I generally use the sketchy GUI. Um, this is because it shows that it's definitely a wireframe rather than an actual mock-up. Um, the visual style isn't there. So I'm going to drag uh, a mobile phone uh, template over. I'm going to right click and just uh, fit it to the content and I can just zoom it uh, so it fits on our screen here. I'm now going to go to the sketchy GUI um, and most of the things I'm going to do are with the sketchy GUI. So I'm going to drag this uh, white box over and that's going to be my screen. Just get it to fit and I've actually got to go to the Android GUI interface and I'm just going to pull um, a little status bar out from there as well. Here we go. Excellent. Okay, now all of these things, I, I want them to stay in the same place. So I'm actually going to um, lock these. So if you right click on um, each of them, you can actually uh, lock each one. And that's really useful. It means that then when I start putting things on top, they're not going to slide around underneath. Uh, excellent. Look at that. That's good. I can zoom in and out. I can uh, rename if I right click and go to properties. I can actually give it a name. So that's going to be my start screen here. Okay, and then update that so we can see in here that's my first page. Now I can start dragging and dropping things on. So back to the sketchy GUI interface, and I can stick a label on. This is going to be my logo. So eventually the logo will go here. Notice it's in Comic Sans, which is a uh, obviously not the final font. Uh, it has that hand-drawn look, and all the lines are. Um, slightly wobbly as well. So this is an, an image box, it works really well. As you scale it, it actually changes the size of the pixels. Um, you can also change the pixels up here. So you can either scale it um, using the little handles or you can actually type in the number of pixels. So I'm actually going to define roughly the number of pixels I want. I'm actually going to arrange this so it's above the box. Let's bring it to the front and I can drop it. So that's going to be my logo box. So the logo is going to fit into that area there. Okay, the next thing I want is there's a tagline, so I'm going to drop a, a label here. So we've got a predefined tagline that we need, um, which is the activity day sign up. Um, so we'll type that in. And uh, obviously that's too small, so I can go up to the size, the font size, and make it bigger. And line it up, uh, centralize it. There we go. Just get it to fit. Now this is just a, a wireframe. All of this can change later on. Um, I'm going to also have a giant button. So this is my start screen. So it's going to have a huge button for, for people to start. And it's going to actually have the call to action there. So I'm actually going to just delete that bit there. And again, bring a new uh, label in. I'm actually going to just, just label this as a start button so we know right off that it's a start button. Because at the moment, you know, none of this is actually going to be interactive. We'll do that later. And I'll put the... Uh, the call to action. I might just copy copy this and the big call to action is sign me up. Big exclamation mark. So that's um, going to be our our start screen. Okay. Um, 
So literally just the logo, what it is, a big button. Right, okay, now I'm going to make my next screen. Um, so once I click the button, it goes to the next screen. So um, we can go to this page tab here. You can look at it either by a visual style or just by the number. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go on to duplicate. And um, that means it actually duplicates it. Uh, it copies the name as well of the previous page or screen. So I'm gonna right click and just go to the properties and change that name. So it's gonna be the, the new page. Um, give it its new name. Give it any name you like. Now you can see I've got two pages there. I can now delete all the bits that I don't want. Um, now this isn't going to have such a big logo. I'm actually going to resize this down to a smaller size. And so it's going to have a small logo in the corner. Um, just resize it here. That's a lot easier. Make a bit in the corner. Just eyeball it. I'll make this text smaller as well, just so it fits. So that's going to be the logo and also the actual name of the app, the Activity Day Sign Up. I'm going to make that smaller and stick that up in the top as well. Again, all of this can change later on, but this is just to give an idea of layout where things are going to be. You'll notice the lines pop up as you move things around that let you align it with all the different elements, so it's quite easy to move about. Okay, so at this point, um, uh, this is where there's going to be like a date picker. I, I had, had thought about putting a calendar in there, but I don't think that's going to work. Um, instead, I'm going to have like a table of dates, so all the available dates. Now, this isn't actually one of the sketchy GUI ones. Um, it's they don't have this table, so I'm actually just using a standard table here. Now, I can edit it. Uh, let's zoom in so you can actually see how that works. Um, you can edit it, it's actually got a, a slightly different format, it uses the pipe uh, symbol um, for extra columns. If I put an extra pipe symbol in there, I can actually add some more columns. So now I've got a second column, date and location. I'll double click on it and edit it again. Um, so then I can add a, a fake date and a fake location. So I can add uh, 12th March, there we go, and campus one will be the location. So this is going to have different dates and different locations so people can see them they can select them. I'm just going to add a few just so we know what it actually looks like. Give, a, give an idea of, of what this selection uh, interface is going to look like. So let's have a, a look. Well, let's add another one. So uh, the uh, square brackets there that just adds a new uh, checkbox. Let's give it another date. It's the pipe symbol and campus 2 again. Okay, so uh, that gives you an idea. I'm just going to move that checkbox as well, just so it's not the first one. Get rid of the little asterisk, put in the second one there. Okay, so so there we go. That's, uh, that's going to have all the dates. I'm also going to have a little scroll bar. Okay, just stick the scroll bar in there just to show that you know there might be like hundreds of dates. You can scroll down obviously in the right order, different campuses or locations. I'm also going to put a color box over the top to show the one that you've selected. Uh, this might become a bit obvious later. So I can go up to the top here, the properties. Oh, there's the right hand slide out of properties that I can play with. Um, oh no, that's the properties of the line. I don't really want that. Uh, I want the properties of the fill. Let's just pick a random one. Get rid of the line. And uh, change the fill. I'm going to change the opacity so it's right down so it's barely visible. Um, whether this goes into the final design or not, but it's just to give an idea of what it is that's selected. There we go. Resize it a little bit. That's so the one that's selected, and I'm going to move that scroll bar above, arrange it. Okay, bring to the front. There we go. Um, so when you select the uh, date, you also then get to see what activities are on that date. So this is then going to be the, the activities on that date. And that's why I've chosen this color here to show that you know how the, the date and location relates to the activities. Um, so I'm just copying uh, control C, control V is probably the easiest thing to do. Uh, I'm just copying that logo. So activities on and then put the date. It's really, really obvious what this box relates to. So when you choose a different date, it should update the different activities. 
Now I'm just going to throw down some uh, radio buttons. These could be checkboxes. I think radio buttons work better because you can only select one, whereas a checkbox you can select multiple. I'll just drag them in. Activity one. Activity two. Uh, this one I'm going to get a checked one. Activity three. paste these rather than dragging them through it doesn't make any difference activity 4 and in the design brief it said that there has to be up to five activities for, for each uh, day um, so on this let this line up there we go that's good activity 5 okay uh, there we go um, I might put a little label saying uh, to uh, select one of these activities. Again, okay, all these wordings can change later on. This is just to start getting some ideas down as wireframes. And obviously, once they're all selected, you've selected a date, you've selected an activity, you then move on to the next screen. Okay, so there we go. Let's just zoom out and see what that looks like. Uh, that's good that fits quite well excellent so uh, let's move on to the next one I'm again going to duplicate that screen it just makes it easier and I'm going to right click and rename that go to the properties and rename that um, so the next one will be the contact details uh, so this screen will will contain the contact details of the person so um, let's delete the bits that I don't want definitely don't want that and I probably don't want the blue box either um, okay let's put a little title uh, what we want them to do we want them to uh, add their contact details and um, what contact details we want we want standard uh, some standard input uh, things so let's just delete all these activities I'm keeping the next button there in exactly the same place um, so it stays it's static and let's have just a standard input text box for my first name I'll control C control V to copy it and as it worked try that again reselect control C control V there we go and their first name last name This will be the they have need their uh, the college that they go to and also their email address. So all this was given in the design brief. Uh, they, the things that they need to put in, so the email. Now I, I think most standard forms nowadays you get to confirm the email so that you haven't put the wrong one in. Uh, uh, email confirmation and obviously the back end and we'll check that the two match. And obviously if it matches you get a little tick so probably wouldn't look like this in the final one but this gives you an idea of what it does so you'll get yes is it confirmed some sort of green tick or whatever okay so that's that's not bad fits quite well good for a start okay I'm going to duplicate this screen again um, and rename this so this is going to give the summary of what the person has chosen so it's the summary screen um, and I can change the details so um, basically this will have everything that the person has chosen so I can delete all these things out there and just stick um, a label actually no I'll stick a, an, an HTML text in um, the label only allows you to have one line whereas this allows you to have um, more than one line you have to have shift and return to be able to go to the next line that's the uh, the secret behind this one shift and return location shift return okay first name last name college they go to and email let's make it a little bit bigger 
Okay, uh, so that's going to be the confirmation. Now, obviously, if they've uh, if they something's wrong here, you want to give them the option to go back to one of these other pages. So I'm going to uh, Control C, Control V, copy the button, and have a button that can go back, so you can change your details. This is going to be the one that um, says what you've selected, and then if you don't want to select this, you can always change it. I'm going to duplicate this screen. So now, uh, assuming you hit next, then this will be the confirmation. So it will be confirming that you have actually uh, signed up or booked this activity um, with these details. So um, I'll just remove the things that aren't needed in here. So really, it's a confirmation on the the date, the activity, the location, and there needs to be a ticket number here as well. So just add a fake number. Okay. Shift return. Go. So there's my confirmation. The other thing that Design Brief says you should be able to uh, save this or, or download this as a. Um, as a PDF. Now I want a little thing saying it's confirmed. That, that actually looks like an error warning. I'm actually going to use the button but I'm not going to have it as a button. Just to give the idea it's like a title box saying confirmed. Okay so uh, there we go. And um, This will be for the saved PDF. button and we'll keep the change button but rather than having a change you want to go to another sign up so maybe they two different people want to sign up on the same app or maybe you want to sign up to a different activity on a different day um, and then an exit button okay so uh, with that done we have a basic structure um, of our a wireframe and we can now go ahead and save this. In part two we'll look at making different buttons interactive and then exporting the whole thing as a prototype as a web page uh, so we can actually test this.